Good morning. Last week was Easter, um, as you know, and uh, in the church calendar, you have these high holy days and you have uh, the rest of the year, which is called, interestingly, uh, it's called ordinary time. It's called ordinary time. And Pastor Billy and I were just talking about how, and, and my wife and I talk about this all the time, how life is really lived in ordinary time, right? Uh, not in the high holy days, although the Lord is there and we need those. But today begins for us another season uh, of ordinary time. And so I commend you as people who are, who are in it uh, during the high holy days, but you're also in it uh, during these ordinary days. Because if the Lord can, if, if, if God can, can infuse himself, can, can, can break into the ordinariness, if that's even a word, of your life, then, then what a rich life you live. If he only inhabits the high holy days in your life, then what do you do with the rest of your life, right? So here we are in ordinary time. Here we are on a regular uh, Sunday morning, and I'm, I'm glad to be with you. Hey, so uh, we're going we're gonna to continue. We have two more weeks, by the way, of this sermon series, and then we're moving into a new series, and we're going to do a brief topical series, and then we're going to go back into another book of the Bible. But we're wrapping up, uh, wrapping up this rather long series that we've uh, the time that we've spent in the book of Philemon and now Colossians, these two letters that the Apostle Paul wrote while he was in prison. He had some time on his hands, and he wrote to some of the churches that he had established, churches that he had started. It'd be like if I went to prison and wrote you a letter, but probably not. It'd probably be a little different than that, but, but that, that's basically the idea. He wrote, he wrote these letters, and now we still have them 2,000 years later. Um, so in this week and next week, and then we're done. Um, we're talking about an interesting topic today, and so I want to tell you a brief story as we, uh, as we jump into this topic, um, a real brief story. Uh, years and years ago, a long time ago, when I was just starting my adult married life, uh, I, I, I put a little bit of money, just, just a little bit of money, invest a little bit of money in a certain uh, direction, a certain, uh, made this investment uh, it was actually 1996, so it was, it was, uh, it was 25, you know, 25, 26 years ago, uh, and it just, it just hasn't paid off. It just, uh, you know, it didn't lose me any money, but, but when you look at inflation, it really did. You know, it, 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 it di- didn't really make me much money. In hindsight, like I, you know, it wasn't a, wasn't a good investment. Now, you know, hopefully there's some other investments that I've made that have kind of balanced that out and made some wise decisions financially over the years. But that one, just a small amount of money, but that one decision that I made, I, 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 should, have, I should have bailed a long time ago. But the money's still there. It's still underperforming. And uh, it's kind of a lesson in life. Like, we make a lot of decisions in life and then we have to go through life determining, should I make a, a correction to the course uh, that I've chosen in life? Should I alter? Should I maybe cash out and, and reinvest? Uh, because this isn't necessarily paying off the way that I, uh, that I was hoping it would. So I'm going to ask a question that maybe is like, like crass. Maybe it sounds crass. Uh, this is the title of the day's sermon. Um, does it pay to be a Christian? Now, even as I wrote, penned those words this week, I thought, ah, oh, is that, the, maybe, it doesn't, maybe it doesn't ring, maybe it doesn't sound right, but, but, but look, I believe that Satan leads you down this path all the time. You wonder, like, is this really worth it? Like maybe if you're financially savvy, maybe you might call it a, a cost-benefit analysis. Like, like, like following Jesus, there's a cost involved, but, but there's also a, supposedly a benefit that comes with following Jesus. And so today we're going to kind of do a cost-benefit analysis, not really because I'm not a financial 
uh, wizard, but, 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 but sort of that, I, that's sort of the idea. We're going to say, does it, really, does it really pay to be a Christian? I mean, we may not want to admit that we think those thoughts, but we do. I'm sure you do, because I do. Does it, does it pay off, ultimately, to follow Jesus? Does it make, does it make sense to follow Christ? That's what we're talking about. Let's jump into the passage, and I think you'll see what I mean. Um, the passage is Colossians chapter 3. I've said this about several passages in the book of Colossians. Like This is one of the most famous paragraphs in the Bible, and, and then I come to another. It just speaks to the fact that, that, that no wonder Colossians is some, some people's favorite book. It's just a really, there's a lot of richness in, in this letter, the letter to the Colossians. I'm going to read out loud and you follow along silently. We're going to camp out on this, these four verses today. We're going to leave them projected. I don't have like a lot of points and sub points. We're just going to look at this passage. I'm going to unpack it sort of like a school teacher might underline and, and highlight. And, and you can do that. It's okay to, if you brought a paper Bible, underline, highlight. If it's in your phone, you can make some marks. We're really going to do that kind of just break down these, these four verses today. So I'm going to read out loud. You follow along silently and then we'll, we'll break it down. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God, when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord for which I give thanks. All right, first what I want to do is simply summarize, put this in my words, and you you can do the same thing. Let's work through this together. And let's decide, like, what does this say in our, kind of our, in our own words? And, and I, I've got some notes on that. Here's what I think it says. I think it's saying, if you are in Christ, actually a, a, in a very appropriate uh, English translation of, of the Greek could be since. Like, Paul is assuming that you're a Christ, that, that the reader is a Christ follower. The NIV, they use if for a good reason that I won't go into. But, but really, he's saying... Let, let's just, it's a given, uh, you're reading this, this you're, you're, you're part of the church in Colossae, I'm just going to give you the benefit of the doubt here, Paul is saying, since, or in the NIV's case, if you are a Christ, uh, or a, a, a uh, 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 raised with Christ, it'd be like if I said to one of my family members, if you're, if you're a part of this family, and it really what I mean is since you are a part of this family, if you're a part of this family, if you have been raised with Christ, then it's saying, Paul is saying, then you should primarily seek heavenly things, heaven being, being where Christ resides, not, not like a space, like the space between heaven and earth, but more the realm, the realm, the kingdom of God, the realm in which uh, Jesus inhabits, Christ inhabits. You should, you should be, you, your mind should be set on heavenly things things, the, the realm in which Christ resides, going on, this is my summary, you have, you have died with Christ, which is weird to hear, especially if you're like not really, uh, uh, you know, church or Bible savvy, but we're going to talk, like, obviously you haven't died, you're, you're here, but, but we'll, we'll talk what that means here in just a minute. You've died, and, and this all summary, and now your life is, is hidden, that's the that's the word that's used. Your life is hidden with Christ. And then it goes on and it says, one day Christ is going to appear. And when, 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 when Christ makes his, his appearance, then all, all of his followers, all of the children of God, they too will be ultimately revealed. Because right now, who knows? I mean, maybe I'm a Christ follower. Maybe I'm just faking it. It looks like you're a Christ follower, but I don't know. It's hidden, but one day... Christ is going to appear, and one day all of, his, all of his followers will be 
revealed, hidden, but one day appearing. We're going to talk more about that. So that's the, that's the basic summary. Now let's break it up, I'll break it down a little more, um, in a little more detail. I want to ask this question because, you know, it starts off with, if you've been raised with Christ, he could just as easily have said, if you're a Christ follower, if you are to use a, a, a name that they used back then, if you're, if you're a part of the way, before they, had, before they called Christians Christians, like in Jesus' day, there wasn't the, the term Christian, but they would say people of the way. So it, Paul says, if you are um, a people of the way, if you're a Christian, if you are uh, in Christ, if you've been raised with Christ, so I want to talk just briefly, what does that mean? What does it mean to be a Christian? Like, well, Randy, I've been a Christian 30 years. I, I, I know what it means. Not so fast. Let's, let's talk about this. I want to be real clear in Paul's teaching in the teaching throughout the New Testament, to be a Christian, it is not a set of beliefs. Now we do, as Christ followers, we do bend the knee or submit to Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible. We don't make up our own version of Jesus. So there, we, do, there is a, we do believe in Jesus we do attach ourselves to a set of beliefs, but being a Christ follower isn't in and of itself um, a set of beliefs. So what is it? <clears throat> it's under the umbrella of being bound, being bound with Christ. So all of this teaching, but all of Paul's teaching, it goes something like this. As when Christ died, when, when the God-man, when God came to earth, incarnated himself, became the God-man, went to the cross purposefully on our behalf, when Christ died, those of us who are bound up with Christ, so did we. So did I die. Now, obviously, I'm still alive. I'm, there's blood still pumping through my body. But there's this concept throughout the, throughout the Bible which says I die to self. I died in my old ways. There's this spiritual death of me as my own autonomous, independent, God-like being myself. And I say, no, I'm going to die to that. Dallas Willard, great philosopher and Christian professor, he says, being dead to self means that when I don't get what I want, it doesn't surprise me. When I, when I don't get what I want, it doesn't offend me. Uh, it doesn't have control over me because I've, I've died to self. So what does it mean to be, to be bound with Christ? Well, first it means that, that when Christ died, so did I. Galatians 2.20, um, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. It is Christ who lives in me or through me. So to be bound to Christ, when Christ died, so did I. When Christ was buried, so was I. When, when Christ was rect resurrected, so were we raised to new life. What does all that sound like? Well, it sounds to me like the symbol of baptism, right? If I've baptized you in the last few years, or Pastor uh, Billy baptized you, or like like when I was baptized by Brother Bob Clements back in, I don't know, 80 or something like that, 78, 79, you know, you say like you're, you're, you're buried with Christ in baptism and you're raised to new life. What that, that's a symbol. There's nothing magic about the water. That's a symbol of what we're talking about here. To be bound with Christ means when he died, so did I. And now, now he lives this new life in me, through me, to be bound up with Christ. So just really one really super practical example of how that plays out in my life. Um, if, I'm, if I'm bound up with Christ, then, then, then maybe there's some night, just silly little example, maybe one night, like, man, I'm, I'm so tired, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm not going to gospel community tonight. Not that, not that like, it's a rule that you have to go to gospel community. You know, everybody, everybody misses every once in a while. But like, oh, I'm not going to gospel. I'm just too tired. I'm going to, you know, stay home, drink beer, and watch Monday Night Football. Whatever. You know? and then, and then, but then guess what? Um, 
Jesus decides tonight he's going to gospel community. He's like, you're bound to him. It's like, oh, I guess I'm, I'm going to, to gospel community tonight because you sort of get dragged along with Jesus. And I mean, that's silly, but, but that's where like, conviction sort of lies in our hearts is that we're bound up with Christ. And there are times where we don't even know where we're going, but he's leading, he's, he's drawing in our convictions and in our desires and giving us the desires of our heart. We're bound up with Christ, so he leads us there's this old song we used to sing back in, the, back in the day, Wherever He Leads, I'll Go. It's a beautiful song. Lydia and I'll sing it to you after church. Um, anybody know that hymn from back in the day? You're too young to know that, but good job. <laughs> Our life is bound with Christ. Now, there are several, uh, we're moving on here, moving on, moving through this passage. There are several contrasts in this passage that I find fascinating. One of them we're going to deal with all next week. But there are two contrasts. you know what a contrast is? Like when you, like you show the difference between two things. Like I brought something. A little show and tell. I started to... Anyway, um, so I got these two glasses. These two, two pairs of glasses. And like, they're very similar in many ways. Like they look like, I bet you, if I put, like you, they look the same, right? But they're, I don't want to talk about the, the similarities. I don't want to talk about the differences because there's contrast. And so like this, these glasses that I wasn't wearing, I can see you. They like you have beautiful faces, and I I I may even leave these on because I can see you the rest of the time. But but these, what these do, you know, if you're like my age or older, they help me see what's on the page, and so it's dangerous when I'm preaching to wear these because you don't know what I'm going to say, right? Like I may I may like wow tomorrow morning I'll be like did I actually say that? Um, because the, my notes, my, my manuscript, that, that's important that I see. I can kind of see with these. So um, now nah, I'm going to go back to these. Okay, so, so there's a contrast to, how, how, to, to, the, to this pair and this pair. So Paul, he, he, there's several contrasts in, these pa- in this passage. And, and so I want to I show you two of them. One of them is this. He contrasts... Um, <clears throat> No, no, go back to that. Yeah, I'm just finding it. No, go back to the original passage. I'm just finding it. Things that are above in verse 1, things that are above in verse 2, and, and things that are on earth in verse 2. So he contrasts. He doesn't really break it down. I'm going, I, I, we're going to take just very little time to do that today, but he talks about the, the things of heaven and, and the things of, of earth. That's the one contrast that he makes. The second contrast that, that he makes is he talks about, about being hidden or being veiled. For, for you've died and your life is hidden with Christ. And then the contrast is that, but that one day there, there are things that will be revealed, that will, be, that, will be, that, will be, that will appear. Things that are hidden will one day appear. I know that's, that's kind of vague, but we're going we're gonna to unpack those two contrasts right now. The, the, first of all, we have heavenly things and we have earthly things. And, and Paul says, if you are a Christ follower, or since you are a Christ follower, since you have died with Christ, been raised with Christ, he says, primarily set your mind on heavenly things. He says, primarily you should seek the things that are above. And he says it twice in two different ways. In verse 1, seek the things that are above. In verse 2, he says, set your minds on the things that are above. And then in contrast, he says, don't seek, don't set your mind primarily on things of this earth. So let's talk about the first, this first uh, contrast. The, the things of heaven, the things of that are above the the heavenly realm. Well, what are these things that we are to think about? And we're going to break that down in full force next week. But but let me just give you some sense of the idea. The heavenly realm is, or, or the heavenly place is, the place where Christ is. The place where Christ resides. You notice in this passage, he mentions Christ four times, really five. He says, 
If you've been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated, the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not the, not the things of earth. For you've died and your life is hidden with Christ. When Christ, I think we're, maybe we're at least up to four now, who, who is your life appears, then you will appear with, and then you get the, the, the pronoun, him, also refer, Christ is everywhere in this passage. So when he's talking about setting your mind on things above, he's He's very specifically talking about this realm, this kingdom in which Christ resides, the ethic that Christ taught, the value system that, that, that Christ espoused, the, the, this realm, this place where Christ sets, seek the things above where Christ is. Set your mind on the things above where Christ is. And then it goes, for you are hidden with Christ. It's not the, the, the heavenly realm, the heavenly place, the, 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 the invitation to set our mind on things above isn't so much about a different place. It's about a different state. Set your mind on things above. So Paul says, think about heavenly things and keep on thinking about heavenly things. And you know, I don't think that's so much a stretch for us, and here's what I mean by that, just as human beings. I don't think that's so much of a stretch for us because all of us, and that may be a slight overstatement, but all of us are intrigued with thoughts of the heavenly and the eternal. I mean, it fills it fills our, our movie theaters. Uh, it, it, it fills the internet. It, 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 it fills whatever, however else you engage mindfully in your life. Probably when you go off to the mountains or when you get away uh, at the sea, your mind wants for the eternal. Your mind wants for the heavenly. The culture, I believe, uh, is enamored by the eternal. I believe it's what, for instance, what, what makes the, the Avengers so super popular? The idea that, that there's more than just this hum, drum, weak sort of life that I'm living. What, what if life is way bigger than this. Oh, that it might be. And I, I'm too scared to live on the edge, but if I can go to the movie and watch someone, I can vicariously, I can live, I can live on the edge, uh, take risks, dream of the supernatural, then I'll pay 12 bucks for that or whatever it costs, right? Like we, we long for that. We want that to be true. Even if we're not sure, even if we maybe doubt that it is true, we want for the supernatural. Oh, that it might be. I think there's something in us that wants for that. I mean, there's even a movie called The Eternals, right? Is, it, is, 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 the, is, is the in front of the, part of the, part of the, part of the title, The Eternals, right? I think maybe I've seen some of that with, uh, with Boyce. Uh, wildly popular Mar Marvel uh, Studios uh, success. Why? Not because it's such a great movie, but because we are intrigued by the thought of the eternal. Paul, Paul doesn't, um, he doesn't try to stamp that out. What he is attempting to do is to, is to direct those thoughts toward Christ. So I don't think that, that I have to, we're going to paint a pretty good picture next week, but I don't think I really have to paint a really, really detailed picture on what it means like to, for, for your mind to be captivated by the things of this earth and your mind to be captivated by the, the things of God. Um, I think we kind of know. Like, like when, I'm, when, I'm, when, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm thinking about my stuff, when I'm thinking about my money, when I'm thinking about the, the expensive stuff riding in my garage, when I'm thinking about like, like I'm, I'm really bound to this earth. I'm really a, a servant 
to my stuff. I'm really, I'm really thinking on things of the earth. And Paul says, a much better way to live is to, to, to think on, to seek after, to live in the realm of the eternal. All right, that's the first contrast. The second contrast is this. And that is that there are things that are veiled and, and those things will one day be revealed. There are things that are veiled and there are things that are revealed and, 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 and actually it's just one thing. It's just two different states. It's the now and it's the, the then. And what Paul is saying is our true status as Christ followers is, is veiled. He says that it's for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ. What does that mean? Well, it means that our true status as Christians, it's, it, it's veiled, it's, it's hidden, um, especially to those around us. I mean, God knows our hearts. Christ knows where we are right now in our, in our submission to him. But like, like I can go out in the, in the world and I, I, I don't look much different than anybody else. And so what do we do sometimes as Christians? We, we try to look different because we don't want our status to be veiled. We want everybody to know that we're Christians. So maybe we make up some extra rules that we can follow and non-Christians have a hard time following. And we say, see, we're different than you, right? Or we somehow we try to build this status or we try to, to self-reveal the fact that I'm a Christ follower and you're not. Now, I don't, I don't, hopefully we don't really do that, but, but we see Christians do that. Maybe sometimes we fall into that trap, but, but understand your status as a Christ follower, it, it's always been intended that, that right now it's, it's veiled. It, it's hidden. I, I can't, I can't, you know, I, I, I know my, my, I know Lydia, my wife, and my kids, and I pretty much know their junk, know their stuff, and I'm like, yeah, you guys look like you're authentic. Like, you really do seem to be authentically following Jesus. But I can't, I can't speak into your life. You can't really speak into my life. There's this sense of that we are hidden with Christ. There's also, by the way, uh, one aspect of that word is this sense of just security, being resting in Christ. Um, there's also kind of a, a, a mysterious aspect to the word because theologians don't necessarily know exactly what he means by hidden, but I do think one aspect of it is like it's, it's something that isn't immediately um, discernible by the general public. In other words, you may be going through life right now and you may be, you may be uh, seeking things above and people around you are seeking things of the earth, and like they're they're like getting ahead in life, and maybe you feel like you're not. You know, maybe they're amassing wealth, and maybe you feel you're not. You know, and maybe they're spending all of their money on themselves. And, and meanwhile, many of you you give you give a, a high percentage of your income to the church, to the things of the Lord, and your your mind. Your mind, if that's you, your mind is set on eternity. Your mind is set on the things of the Lord. Now, 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 now some of us here, we, that's, not a, that, that's not you at all. Maybe you, you're not a, a, a giver, and maybe you're kind of stingy with your stuff, and, and maybe you're keeping it all to yourself, and you're still uh, set on earthly things. But many of you, your mind, your heart, your affections, your dreams, you're set on heavenly things, this realm in which Christ resides. And, and it's hidden in the sense that right now, there's this one, like, am I getting ahead? Like, does this really matter? Does this really pay off? Maybe, maybe the wicked will, will uh, maybe ultimately that, that's what pays off. Like, do, do the righteous ultimately get rewarded or do, do the wicked win the day? And what Paul is saying here is, look, you hold on, you, you hang on, you just wait. You, your life is hidden with Christ in God. But one day that's going to be revealed. I can't really look in this room and, 
and, and tell you if you've been buried with Christ, if, if, you, if you've been raised to a new spiritual life with Christ, and, and you will one day appear with Him in glory. I can't look at you and tell because that's hidden. But Paul wants to assure you, if you are hidden with Christ... You're, you're, you're faithful to his name and, and his calling in your life. Paul says you just, you just hang on. You just keep following Christ. Keep focusing on the heavenly things. And one day your status for eternity will be revealed. Romans 8, we're not going to project it. Romans 8, 19 has this beautiful concept, this beautiful passage. It says this, that all of creation is waiting for this one day revealing of who God's children really are. Now, if you're a Christ follower, then, then, then this is an ethic, a teaching, a truth within Scripture that you're to embrace, to you, that you're to, to believe, that you're to rest on, that right now things are hidden. Right now things are veiled, but there will be a one day appearing of Christ and when when. When, when Christ steps out in glory and he appears, you appear with him. Let's, let's apply this and, and we'll be done for today. The application is really this. This, this waiting, the, this stage of the game for us as Christ follower, uh, that's, that's the stage we're in right now, this waiting, this hidden in Christ, this, this waiting for Christ to appear in glory that we might also appear with Him. It's, 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 it's in an awesome way, it's summarized in, a, in, a, in, 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 the, in uh, 1 John chapter 3. And I want to look at that now. We're going to go to another passage for, for our application. This is what it says. and we, we studied, I think this past summer, we studied... It was the summer of love. Remember, we studied, we studied the, the, the epistles of John. Um, this is what he says. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. Now talk about being veiled or hidden one day. The reason why the world does not know us is that it does not know him, God. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, because we shall see Him as He is. So I encourage you today, be, being a Christ follower isn't a set of beliefs. It's not just giving mental um, assent to some things that you've read. Be being a Christ follower is, is that and so much more. Being a Christ follower is setting your mind on the things of Christ. Trying to, trying to like, like rip, rip the fabric that ties you to the stuff of earth and, and to... To, to, to set your mind on the things of Christ, to set your mind on heavenly things. Being a Christ follower is, is seeking after the kingdom of God, saying, say, you know, I'm here right now, I'm going to engage my friends, I'm going to be a part of this, this realm, this earth, but what I'm really doing is I'm, I'm seeking after the kingdom of God. Set your mind on Christ, set your heart on the things of Christ. Seek after the kingdom of God. And just know that, that, that in, in, in Christ's ethic, that, that in His realm, in His kingdom, it's hidden now, but, but one day you will appear with Him and you will be rewarded for, for eternity. You will be a son, a daughter of the living God. You will be brothers and sisters with Christ. You will, you will reap the rewards. And so press on. Seek Christ. Set your mind on things above, not on the things of this earth. Amen. Let's pray. God, we come before you today 
celebrating the fact that there's more to life than just this earth. If this, if this is all there were, if, if this is all there is, um, as beautiful as this creation is and as intense as this creation is, is if, if this is all that there is, 70 or 80 or 90 years of living, then we'd be disappointed, but you've, you've called us to more than just that. And so we, we want to once again uh, recalibrate our thoughts, recalibrate our affections, and we want to think on things above, seek after the, the heavenly things. And so that's, that's why we come to the table of communion today, that you might, you might capture our hearts, that you might capture our affections. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen.